It's the 16th of January 2019. I'm David Griffin. I'm here at Aston on Trent. And I'm talking to David Duncan, Robin Quinn, Chris Jones, and Ian Dunn. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us once again. We're talking about Aston on Trent Village Cricket Club because I understand that's the, the name of the newly uh, formed cricket club, which is now going to be going into its fourth season in its new incarnation. Um, what I'm really interested in is, is the future and where, where the game goes for Aston on Trent. So I suppose the first question I would ask is what's the likelihood or the desire about playing competitive cricket? I'm not suggesting your friendly cricket isn't competitive, but it's not for points. Um, so is there any plan or any wish to go and play? I think the youngest member should pick that one up. Um, it, it's been a discussion that, that's on the cards all the time, isn't it, about going into competitive cricket? Because um, I think on one hand, it, it, w it would be nice to offer um, that, that, that competitive element especially if we can do it alongside maintaining the friendly so, so we can cater you know cater for, for both appetites um, saying that though I think we at, at the moment for Aston we've we've got quite a nice USP in that we're surrounded by a plethora of, of really strongly established league clubs uh, Elverston Alverston and Bolton Swarkston Etwell Ockbrook you know the, 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 there's loads of them around so um, so to, to try and start up certainly before we're ready is going to be difficult because that catering is already there whereas what we offer is regular cricket throughout the summer um, based on availability rather than ability so if you're keen you'll get some action yeah. um, and you don't have to the commitment levels obviously for friendly cricket are, are a little bit you know, well it's lower than it would be for league cricket yeah. so we are riding that, that kind of wave of the USP at the moment but I think it's fair to say at some point in the next you know if we're looking over the next five years uh, I think the appetite will only grow to uh, to look seriously at entering league cricket. What what's the reaction of, of your neighbouring clubs, your fellow clubs, when when the the club had to restart? Were, were they supportive? Were they sympathetic? Supportive would be an understatement. Really? Yeah. We've got some yeah. great alliances with local clubs, uh, particularly Swarkston. Yeah. Uh, they help with the pitch maintenance. Um, they use us as an outground and they play some third eleven fixtures right. uh, on our ground. Um, they've uh, prepped the wickets, uh, training us in all aspects of um, uh, governance of a club. Um, really, they've been fantastic. Elveston have been great. Um, Elveston have links with the ladies and, uh, and so on. Yeah. So. Um, we work quite closely with them. Um, other clubs at Wall, uh, people have come up to us and said, if we can help, mm. just let yeah. us know. here's my number. Yeah, That's been fantastic. And in terms of numbers, how many people have you got now that are associated with a club in a playing capacity? I think 26-ish registered players at one point in time, yeah, was it? Yeah. That's just the seniors it's as well. Seniors, yeah. 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 So 26 seniors who, yeah. who have like to play at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 On occasional basis. Family commitments permitting, yeah. wife committing, and everything else. So, yeah. And and what about below the the adult grouping? A uh, year one we just did the quicks, the under elevens. Year two yeah. we we ended up year three was it two two or three year with the, with the ECB initiative with the all stars, and they ended up with twenty nine all stars and I think yeah. fourteen fifteen really? year quicks. Yeah. 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 M mixture of the boys and girls. And what's the, what's the, well, we'll come on to the girls in a second, but what, what's the retention rate, perhaps too early to ask, is it with, with the rebirth only four years old? It's no, no, the, the retention rate is good. Um, on All Stars, um, we kept 16 of the previous years, right. and of the 13 that were lapsed, the number of them had just simply gone over age yeah. and moved into... What's the age? What's the age? Uh, five, five to eight. Right. Five to eight. Um, we had 28 last year. Wow. Um, which is great, and... We've gained some adult players as well from parents who yeah. watch mm. their youngsters getting involved, and we've said. And are most of the children local? Do you know, local to the village? Oh, yeah. Yes, we, yeah. we had a few from outside because there were fewer local clubs <coughs> running All Stars in year one. Yeah. Um, but they were predominantly uh, children from the village. Can in you year just two. explain for, uh, more for posterity, really? I suppose years to come, people will wonder what All Stars were. Well, just explain what the principle behind. Well, it's an ECB is. initiative to introduce five to eight year old children to. Mm -hmm. A fun way of learning cricket. Yeah. Non-competitive, um, non fun exercises to develop yeah. catching and hitting and fielding skills basically. Yes, it's very, very successful and very impressive operation. It's eight evenings uh, yeah. throughout the summer and they learn a different drill for each of the three skills, batting, yeah. bowling, fielding, each week. 
Um, and we were very lucky in the first year, weren't we, that um, there's a, a sweepstake for all-star clubs to then uh, do a demonstration at a test match venue. Yes. And we came out of the hat for Trent Bridge. Really? Uh, on the Saturday yeah. of the South Africa test. Yeah. And what year was that? Uh, that was our, that Seven, was 2017. 2017. 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, tell us more about that. <laughs> that was a great what day. Was it, it was a fantastic day, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. England, unfortunately, were getting a bit of a face to get the time, weren't they? Yeah. So what did you, what was, tell me the whole day, you, 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 you got a bus there, or how did you all get there? No, we arranged, to, we arranged to meet right. at the ground. Um, and you got uh, free admission? Yeah, tickets uh, tickets in, in into the ground, so we, we were all sort of arranged to meet in a, en masse outside the ground. Yeah. We met with our sort of appointed um, All-Stars coordinator. Yeah. Uh, which I think was Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. Rachel Hopkins. Yeah. Rachel. Oh, well, yeah. She worked for yeah. the cricket That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Rachel looked after us for the day, and we, we took a, a you know a good gaggle of kids along, um, and they uh, so we, we were there for the start, and, and they were brilliant, weren't they? You know, kids, yeah. Test match cricket yeah. and kids doesn't always go together. So where did you sit while the game was on? We sat round. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the stand, but if you if you if you look out of the pavilion, and you've got obviously the big uh, the big Building opposite there, on the other, up the other end of the ground, the right, right, road, right, 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 road, road. just to the left corner, hand side yeah. there on the corner. Oh yeah. right, so beyond just the Bridgeford Road, yeah. So, yeah, so yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were sat, in the, and there were lots of lots of different clubs in there. So you know, a sea of blue All Stars shirts and and um, Sam, you know, lunch. Lunch and sandwiches was eaten by about 20 past 11, I think. Was <laughs> a bit hungry, so that was it. By, by 12 o'clock, the lunch had gone. But, and then at the, but the lunch interval, we all sort of got to, to go on to the pitch and do some drills there. And it was, it was brilliant, you know, the, the, the real da you know, day to remember for us, I guess, as, and the you, as adults, but for the kids, the kids, well. the kids yeah. themselves, it was, uh, yeah. wow. it was fantastic. And the crowd were brilliant because the way they'd set it up was, you know, when they were doing the hitting thing, is yeah. that you, you're sort of throwing them the ball from the boundary edge and the, the, the emphasis was kids whack it as far as you can into the ground and they'll all applaud to you and, and it was it was yeah brilliant day. Brilliant Whoa, day. wonderful thing for, for and so that was that was potluck, you say that was a sweet yeah, yeah. yeah, our name came out of the hat. Really? The it must have been very rewarding when you put all that work in, even though it's the look of the draw, it still must be a, a great feeling to get something like that. Well, the, the, the whole ethos of, of junior cricket and the way we want to build the club is to make sure children play with a smile on their face yeah. and that day just epitomised it. Mm. Mm. Did you two get to go? I, I, I got <laughs> a chance, but unfortunately yeah. I had prior commitments. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I missed out unfortunately. I've been to Tranbridge yeah. before, but yeah, yeah. With, without the kids unfortunately. Um, when we spoke in the first interview, we talked about you, you've got a daughter. Yes. Uh, is she playing? Is she involved in cricket? She is, yeah. She's uh, my youngest, uh, Katie. She's um, just turned 12 uh, in September, so she was involved with the with the quick cricket, um, you know, um, really Chris was, you were the, the quick cricket supremo when, when that all started, really, weren't you? So In our first season. In the first yeah. season, so um, so she, she joined that, had a go and, and really enjoyed it. Um, and since then, she's been involved with uh, the South Derbyshire Women and Girls Cricket, right. the South Derbyshire Cricket Development Group of Women and Girls with uh, Andy Johnson yep. over at Elverston. So she joined that last year and had a, um, a full sort of season training with them last year. They've had a session or two at, at Aston as well with um, you know with some of the girls. Obviously, they moved their training sessions around the local mm. area, so we've had one or two here now. Um, so yeah, she's had a, a first full, full season with them last year in terms of training. Um, proud parent moment. She's now in the under. She's been uh, joined the under 13s, Derbyshire under 13s development uh, girls development squad. So she had her first session last week at Chelsea. And so yeah, and she loves it. You know, I'm, I'm almost to the point of saying, you know. If you're not enjoying it, you must say, you know, mm. I don't want to sort of have to think she knows how much I love it, but obviously, but no, she was, you know, we go, we, we went to, to the World Cup games at Derby, um, which were fantastic last did year. That, did that, that have an impact on, on you, oh, to the, huge, the winning of it and the <coughs> games were local? Yeah, too. absolutely massive. Really? Last year we went to the New Zealand, the, the game they played, yeah. and, and the access, you know, I know they're not as sought after, I guess, as, as the men's. Yeah. But the access to the ladies, the way that the, the, the girls, the, the women are with the, the girls, the fans, there's all the time in the world for photographs, talking to them. You know, we even had 
was one of the, the, the mums of the New Zealand team was there and she was rounding up the players going come on you know, you've got to come over and sign really? some goals have a picture and sign mm. it was just you know and, and for, for Katie to sort of experience that yeah. you know she's uh, uh, for her to sort of have such access to people yeah. that she looks up to you know there's the likes of Sarah Taylor and, and these guys you know um, what's she do really? bat ball keep she, she, she bowls down, she, she bowls well no she's not as, no, she's not as bad as that. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, no she likes to bowl she likes to bat you know I think there's maybe a keeper in there somewhere but I think that's just me maybe <laughs> well, she's Sarah Taylor to just well, it's not, it's, well, yeah, she's yeah. not a bad role yeah. model so it, it must be wonderful but I, 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 I don't I know, don't want to you don't have to hog this no thing, no but, but, yeah. but yeah, I find it fascinating because women have not really had the the, the cricketing role models to look look up no. to and yet now all of a sudden I'm thinking of you, you hear names Indian cricketers and South Africans and Australians yeah. and actually we we us men know who these people yes. are now. yes. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly names that, and it must be great for girls to actually, instead of Freddie Flintoff or, or yes. whoever, that there's actually a, a female cricketer yeah, to, yeah. to aspire to and to. Yeah, to just to I mean, admire. just without <coughs> just to take up too much time. There's a little story after the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah. We, we got tickets. Um, Katie and I were going down to see the World Cup final at Lords. The, the ladies are mm. 50 over, so we, we were on the way down. She was ill on the train, unfortunately. <coughs> My wife had to do a bit of a dash down to Kettering. We got off and, and I decided, do I go or don't I go? And in the end, I went, Jane said, look, you know, <laughs> Katie's fine, take her back home. So I went on down for the final. And I just ended up talking outside the pavilion after the game. I thought I'd get some, some, sort, some autographs for her and ended up talking to a guy. Long story, but the, the guy that I was talking to ended up to be uh, involved with the ECB. Gave me his card and said, give me a call tomorrow when you get home. I hope your daughter's feeling better. Okay, no more of it. Rang the next morning, spoke to him and said, it's me, you know, we spoke. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Give me your telephone number. Gave him a number. Within an hour or two, phone had rang, asking to speak to Katie. Danny Wyatt was, was wow. with the England team. Yeah. How, you know, heard you couldn't make it yesterday. So, oh, you know, it was such a shame mm -hmm. you couldn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, why would she not fall in love with that? Yeah. With that sort of set up and, and aspire to be... Yeah. Oh, okay. so is it too much to expect a, a women's team at Aston? Yeah. Or, or do you think that's... We, we, we have attempted in a couple of times, well, one in particular we had a, a women's uh, Prosecco, Prosecco cricket, cricket, evening. cricket evening. Do you know that's not, yes. this is not um, the first time I've heard and, uh, Prosecco Yeah, it was on this Darby project. Show chucked a couple of bottles into us as well, didn't yeah. they? And, uh, did. We had a fantastic evening with uh, some of the, the young ladies and daughters of the village. And, so, uh, the Prosecco, I presume, the drink off the after, table. After. After, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> So, where do we go from here? We've talked about the possibility of uh, um, your 28 players, so I guess you, at the moment you, 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 that's enough to, to put one team out. Yep. But, Potentially, if they were all available all the time, you could put two teams out. What, what, how do, you, do you have a vision for, let's say, five five years' time? I think where, sure. where would you like to be? It's probably the, 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 the primary focus really has been uh, around the kids, hasn't it? Yeah. Developing the kids' setup. So I think what um, one of the key uh, the key areas of development for us over the next few years is is bridging that gap between. We've got all stars going on to quicks, but then it's it's been able to bridge that gap between quicks and then being able to play hardball cricket. Yeah. Um, and if we if we can link that end to end, then I think we'll be in a in a fantastic position. You know, we've we've got um, facilities have been developed year on year. Uh, I think, like Dave mentioned earlier, we've uh, we've got rollers, we've got mowers uh, re through fundraising that we've done. Through the support of, of the parish council, we've got uh, we'll be installing an artificial uh, wicket as well. Um, really? Hopefully, in the close season, yeah, uh, we've got you know, pr practice uh, practice materials for uh, you know for, for hardball practice. Yeah. So, so that that will continue to develop. And as I say, if we can just bridge yeah bridge that gap between the juniors and the seniors, uh, and tie that in with you know, potentially league cricket, hopefully alongside the friendlies, then. That then we'll have it all, won't we? So, how before we conclude that, I, I'm interested in in how rewarding this must this this project, if you like, must have been because four years ago you you thought you had to have a club. Yeah. For, for, for me, now you've got. So, what, what's the, how rewarding it's, it's, has it's, it's been? been, been it's, 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 it's a great social activity for 
in particular, I guess, the three of us, uh, you know, when we meet on Wednesday evenings. But, you know, I think the rewarding thing for, for the best thing has been to see the, 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 the kids' presentation up the stairs here when we had how many yeah. room yeah. for the kids getting their the end of season awards. The adult presentation evening mm. at mm. the recreation centre, the first time we actually catered for it and had it in our own clubhouse. Uh, it was just tremendous to see, not, not as a thing, so just step on step, just build it gently. I think it's very similar, you asked about the vision, I think our biggest challenge is also formed our vision, which is that we are senior players, Rob's exception, um, and we, we, we're, we've got to grow our own, so we've got the all-stars, we've got the quicks, we've got children who played quicks for the yeah. first couple of years who are now going on to hardball, yeah. we're trying to ret retain them, yeah. there's plenty of great teenage cricketers in this village, mm. but because there was never a youth facility yeah. here, they yeah, now true. play for other clubs. So we need to bridge that gap by growing our own. When we've grown our own and they've progressed through five years' time, we then have the basis of a, a good adult competitive team. Um, and that would be even more rewarding than what's happened so far. I think as well, what, I mean, one final point for me is grow, grow the base of support and involvement in the club. Um, I mean, the, you know, the, these three guys sat next to me put a phenomenal amount of effort uh, into into the running of the club and I think as, as anybody in, in as do you to be fair well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you but I, I'm not here every Wednesday night though to discuss but uh, <laughs> <That's hard laughs> um, but uh, I think as anybody involved in cricket will testify out of all the sport sporting clubs out there running a cricket club uh, you know at any level is probably the most hardest sport sporting club to run. Um, so if anybody is watching this, <laughs> watching this video from the Aston area that wants to get involved, yes. you know, the, the, the more, yeah, the more the merrier because we need support, we need involvement uh, from from people. And for you, I guess the rewards, are what you're seeing with your own eyes, with your own daughters. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Too. Yeah, playing cricket in the back garden and stuff. It's yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's brilliant. But one one other thing sort of just occurred to me from a I suppose from a selfish point of view was. Probably in the second season, I think midway through the season, we finished the game on a Friday night or whatever, and we were, you know, on our way down to the White Hart for a couple of beers to celebrate a, a win or a loss, which tends to <laughs> we celebrate either way. But just, just to sort of walking back to the car, thinking of just, you know, we've been out, I've played cricket with my mates, and it was just like all those years ago, where you know, you just really enjoyed, just enjoyed the company of your mates. You had a good game, and you enjoyed it, and that's really what you know. What yeah, we've, what we've tried to build within the club is just enjoy it. Absolutely. Well, matter, gentlemen, I, certainly from from the, the the guys we interviewed earlier, from the, the feedback and the comments that you made, it's clear that the fellowship of cricket is alive and kicking in Aston Trent. I'm, I'm sure you're very proud of all the work that you've done so far in revitalising Aston Trent. And more power to your elbow. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank, Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.